It's Tuesday night! That's right, your favorite night of the week. Well, unless you like Mondays better, or Sundays, or Saturdays. But it's in the top seven. It's uh, so you got uh, manic Monday. What's Tuesday? Taco Tuesday. Taco I Tuesday. Except I didn't have tacos today. I didn't either. I, I, I think we discussed that one other time. I, I had I had a salad again. I, I'm kind of like not very original. It's like no, but I'm proud of you, John, having a salad. I, I do that an awful lot. Lori's like, what do you? Is that how can you? Because she she like have a side salad every week occasionally, and then that's basically for myself. That's what the main meal is. And she's like, how do you do that? And it's like, well. It's that, or you weigh 260 pounds, and I don't care for that part of it. So we'll do the salad thing every so. You know, I was thinking uh, being on the road is tough. Uh, you can see there's a hotel room behind me, uh, last minute trip to Orlando, and here I am. But I was thinking, you know, with all this travel, I, I didn't make it to the uh, gym this morning, uh, and that makes like 10 years in a row. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did I touch? There we go. So, welcome everyone to our show tonight. It's Tuesday night with Ben Still, and tonight's topic we're going to be talking about ten different things, different tips, ideas, thoughts, things you need to be thinking about when you're looking for your next set of speakers. And Ben has been slaving away, coming up with tips, evaluating. I did. I did sort of, you know, kind of work it down and say, okay, how do we make this a nice even ten? I thought it was noteworthy, though. I'm sorry, my ADHD kicked in, and oh. I know the viewers are uh, just riveted by our our culinary habits. Uh, but uh, not only did I not have a salad today and not go to the gym today, but my hotel is quite literally next to a Baskin Robbins. Nice, but of course you're, I'm sure, not going to go and partake of the ice cream because. Oh no! I already did. <laughs> what about the? What about your wrestling weight? Ah, uh, you know, I haven't had to make weight since the mid '90s. So <laughs> <laughs> that ship uh, has passed, is what you're yeah, saying. That ship, that ship has sailed and sunk. <laughs> uh, oh. But I did. I did go. Uh, actually, I did get a little exercise today. There's a, a fun little uh, video up that uh, on Nate Bennett's Facebook that uh, Mark from Eternal posted of uh, Nate and I on an escalator. Uh, he wanted to see what all the hype was all about with the escalator ride. So I said, well, come on, get on the escalator, dude. You can try this. And, uh, run down the up escalator for, uh, you know, a bit. So, I mean. High quality Facebook live. Yeah. Right there. This, yeah. this is, this is the best thing happening on your Tuesday night. You know, look, it's me or the president. When I was a kid, you know, if the president was on, he was on all three channels that we got. Uh, and your evening was shot. So look, look at you. You got choices. You got me. So, there you go. You could you could be watching, but you know, again, you can you can relive both of them in tweets later. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So we're gonna get into our top, the, or I shouldn't say top ten, the ten tips for uh, pick, picking speakers. And we've talked about speakers, and there's different levels of speakers and different companies out there. And we're not gonna be pointing to one or the other as as better or or worse right now. This is just to give you guys kind of an idea of some things to look for because. Every manufacturer I've talked to at NAM or any of the other shows, Ben, one of the first, they always cringe about that whole, you know, everyone wants to compare wattage thing. Well, you know, it's interesting uh, that that's the first thing we're talking about because it is, and I'm not joking, it is the last thing on my list. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's one of the points is that the, one of the, the thing that we always are like, oh, how much? I mean, again, I saw somebody the other day who was boasting about, hey, I've got this 10,000 watt speaker. Only if lightning hits it. It's like, interesting. Yeah, tell me how that's going to work out. Yeah, only if lightning hits it and uh, only for a very short period of time then. So, uh, you know, I mean, the thing is getting, you know, into the nerdery, uh, and, and I don't know this for rote, but I'm reasonably certain that uh, 10,000 watts would give you a 40 dB rise, uh, which is only 10 dB more than, than 1,000 watts would give you. Uh, you know, it's the, the logarithmic raise in power handling dictates that. So the fact is, if you had a 10,000 watt speaker, it's only 10 dB louder than a thousand watt speaker of the same sensitivity. In other words, wattage, and we'll get it. We're, see now, we put it last on the list, but we started with it first. We started with it because that's, again, that's what everyone else does. And that's where we'll come back to it. But again, as, as the lesson we'll so take from this first you, part is that whole doubling of the wattage and that just gives you a little bit more of a bump. Yeah. You know, it takes, uh, uh, you know, 
well, we'll get into, I, I guess I wasn't planning on getting into logarithmic calculations, but why not? I like <laughs> so, you know, why not? <laughs> Let's pull out the calculator now. We're going to go through the fun part of the show. Now, we enter that in and the distance. Divide that by, what's the humidity? Okay, now we put that in there and then, oh, we got to enter in the neighbors are being kind of crotchety too, making noise. And then the answer is. No, it's it's much simpler than that. You okay. just take ten times the log of the power handling, and it's, you can do that on any iPhone. It's got a scientific calculator built, and you don't need to know all that neighbor humidity stuff. So, uh, <laughs> so let's so let's so if viewers are probably wondering if wattage is the least important, at least you know it, it, in my book, and I don't know that I would rank these in this order, but it is sort of in a preferential order, and I'll explain why it's why it's towards the bottom, if not the bottom of the considerations on my list. So then you would say, well, what's near the top? And again, there isn't a top, but kind of the top half, you sort of clump together, you know, the top three or four things would be all very important to me. Sure. Uh, number one would be frequency response. What frequencies does the, does the loudspeaker reproduce? Uh, you know, am I looking for a sub box? Am I looking for a top box? Am I looking for something to fill a specific purpose? Do I need something that's going to be a full range box? Uh, so that's going to be one of my very uh, top considerations is what is the frequency response of this loudspeaker? What frequencies will it accurately reproduce? Uh, and how flatly, how evenly, how much is it true to the signal coming in as opposed to how much it colors the sound going out? Uh, and one of the things that's really tricky, uh, and we'll get to kind of a, a callback to this later when we get into manufacturers, is uh, there's an old saying, numbers lie and liars use numbers. Uh, and so you have to really understand your spec sheets. More often than not, your good quality loudspeaker manufacturers, almost always, really, your good quality loudspeaker manufacturers produce good specs. But marketing finds clever ways to make it hard for you to understand. It's a good thing we don't know any marketing guys. Yeah, well, yeah. I know a few that watch the show, uh, in fact, and I'm sure they're signed in right now. You know, it, look, it's somebody started the game and everybody has to play it now. So it's not like you can really point a finger at any marketing person and say they're the problem. Because yeah. They have to play the game that some other speaker company started years ago and nobody even really knows. But everybody has to play the same game now. You as a consumer just have to be a little bit more savvy. You know, you could say that every loudspeaker, every full range loudspeaker is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency response because it reproduces those signals. Yes. That's not really accurate because it's going to have a significant roll off on the low end where it's not effectively reproducing anything below 50 anymore. Uh, not to the same degree that it's producing 100, for example. So it's not producing them evenly enough. Thus, you know, you really can't say that it reproduces those frequencies. Uh, so that's why manufacturers often have these asterisks in their specifications. Mm -hmm. And they'll say that, well, this is uh, minus three or this is minus 10 from the nominal level. Uh, and so that's important uh, to just understand what data you're looking at when considering these things. But so... Top of the list uh, in the top heap would be frequency response. Now, I've got a question about that. Now, as I've looked at the frequency response, and you mentioned that it's flat, and I've seen where they've got the best, basically the, the from from the low frequencies to the high frequencies, and then they have the little kind of a, a bar going across and, and down. So you're getting your roll off on the ends and kind of flat across the, the main part of the uh, sound spectrum. Now, some cabinets say they can go down to, you know, you're seeing it going down to, let's say, 75 dB. And then there's some that will go down to, like, a 70 dB. That's like you're going from maybe the 12-inch to the 15-inch cabinet in there, that that line. is that Are you going to be able to hear, you know, something going down 5 dB? Will the human ear pick that up, that difference? Are we talking, you're saying dB, but are you talking frequency? Like frequency. Uh, uh, hertz. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So that's 75 got, hertz down to... Yeah. So, but if they're you, you, the one cabinet can go down to, and then it has a big roll off at 75 hertz, and the other one goes and has a big roll off at 70 hertz. Am I going to be able to hear a difference between those two cabinets in that frequency range? It's going to make a meaningful difference. You know, a good sound person would be able to pick that out. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I was just at a major uh, pro audio manufacturer, and I was. Uh, I was sitting in my chair listening to the speaker demo and I commented to the guy next to me 
And I said, 4K seems a little light, you know, just four kilohertz seems just a little light. And uh, he pulled out an analyzer on his phone and he says, man, right on, you know, you nailed it. I'm like, well, that's training and practice, you know? So, you know, would somebody sitting there say, boy, this thing doesn't seem like it digs to 70, you know, uh, where the other one, maybe not, but you would probably notice that just in that, I mean, that's a fairly crucial frequency still at that, at 70, for example, yeah. I, I would want something that would go lower than that, uh, you know, to, to get some of that, uh, you know, good mid bass, sub bass, you know, uh, if I didn't have a subwoofer. Sure. Okay. So it's, it's tough to answer. I feel like you might not know exactly what you're missing, but you might feel like it's missing. On the other hand, maybe you wouldn't, you know, I think it's very application specific too. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see. And I think the trained ear would definitely, definitely yeah, that, that show wouldn't up. wouldn't bother me near as bad as 8 million other things that people do with loudspeakers wrong. You know, I mean, if it, if it just didn't go as deep as I liked, that wouldn't bother me near as much as something, a frequency that was really out of whack, that was really high or low, uh, you know, something piercing, you know, uh, a lot of 3K coming through or something, you know, would be much more obnoxious to me than a speaker that just didn't go low enough for my liking. Yeah. But the short answer is there, there is a difference. Um, whether or not it's meaningful is going to be application specific. Sure, sure. Okay, cool. And What's our next one? Talk to you next to me. Let me, uh, real quick, let me just illustrate what I'm talking about. Uh, sorry, if you were just doing this live here. So, yeah. um, this, is, this is the part where we pull out the color crayons. I like that part. <laughs> if you guys have got any questions as we're going through here, besides uh, escalator videos, we probably aren't going to cover escalator videos tonight. Those are those are Facebook Live. That's right. I, this is exclusively the domain of Facebook Live. Let's give this a whirl, okay? Uh, if you can, is that yeah. work? Yep, yeah, we okay. can see it. All right. So this is my frequency response chart here. So let's say my speaker, it's not fat, flat all the way across. It has a little dip here and it's a little high here and a little higher. Totally fictional, by the way. Just made that up. Yep. Uh, and then let's say, okay, so this is my high frequency and it, it makes it most of the way and then drops off. My low frequency starts to lose a little steam about here and then it kind of tapers down. Well, I could say that it does, this is fictionally 20 to 20K, all right? Let's just say that it does make it all the way to 20 Hertz, but reality it doesn't because that's so much lower than what it reproduces, say, 100. There, sure. So the first line I've drawn uh, represents like a minus 3 dB from the average. So the top line is the average and then minus 3 dB. But I, if I say that I go with minus 10 dB, then I could say my frequency response is much lower, you know? And both are accurate statements. Just depends on what the qualifier for the data is. So there we can see my lines. If I say this speaker is plus minus 3 dB of nominal, then it stops here. If I say it's 10 dB, then it's here. Ah, okay, I get you. So this same speaker could be said that it has a frequency response of 70 or 50, you know, depending on, and that's why you have to understand those specs. If you're looking at the spec a little bit and say, okay, well, they're being honest, but if I don't know how they're tricking me, not tricking you, that's not the word I want to use, but you know what I mean? The spec is accurate, but it only is meaningful if you understand uh, the fine print, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of your good manufacturers very regularly publish that data and they'll tell you if it's minus three or minus 10. Uh, certainly if it's not published, it would be accessible. Uh, their, their reps would be able to get you that information. Uh, if they kind of go, I don't know, well, uh, you know. And that happens sometimes. Yeah, the big loudspeaker manufacturers, uh, you know, obviously we like EV, they're a sponsor of the show, a lot of friends in engineering down there, but you know, the other big loudspeaker companies, JBL, RCF, and all that, they, they have engineering facilities, they have anechoic chambers, they have good test equipment, and they're able to produce good spec sheets. Uh, some, some plastic box coming from China, it's the manufacturer, well, the importer in this case, maybe probably has no idea, and I'm not poking fingers at anybody, right. but that's just one of those things where they didn't build that speaker. They didn't engineer that speaker. Uh, you know, and even if they, even if they did, the, the testing is probably somewhat suspect and probably not very accurate. They don't have the upfront investment in that infrastructure. Uh, so, you know, the old adage, you get what you pay for really kind of applies, but that's later in the list. So, yeah. So number two, number two. So we're 15 minutes in, we've gotten through one. Well, we're right on schedule. <laughs> we're doing great. Uh, 
Did I mention oh, this is no. a four part show? Yes, it's a mini series. Uh, number two, coverage pattern. Hmm. Uh, does the loudspeaker put the sound where I want it? Uh, particularly important with high frequency because uh, we want to uh, directionalize that lower energy sound, uh, you know, try to make it a little more efficient. Uh, it gets harder to directionalize low frequency sound. And so typically we find that the lower frequencies are not directionalized in a box. You can see that in the polar response patterns. Uh, again, good manufacturers will have that data. Uh, subwoofers are rarely directionalized uh, until you use like a cardioid array or something. Which, uh, we've done some shows on that, go see those. Uh, but anyway, an old adage, put the point the loud part towards the people, uh, the coverage pattern would be important, you know? So can I get the, uh, can I get the job done, uh, in the area I need to cover with the speaker I need to cover it. And of course that would, that would then use the, the, uh, in a spec talking about dispersion and both the, look at this just showed up. This is, this is when you know you're rolling big. When you're, no, 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 no. Rolling big was when you had that automatic. The automatic yeah. Pepsi machine that you know delivered that night. That was a uh, man. What show was that in? We got to bring that back. Oh, I don't know. That was a great was show. Yeah, this I don't have too... the automatic dispenser right now. No, right? it's too bad that that went on strike. Yes, those robotic arms are getting harder and harder to. Yeah, their their union contracts just kill us. But yeah, the the appreciate it. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Just following in the chat room here. So, okay. So you're, when you're big time, when you can send a text message begging for a soda next, and it actually shows up. That's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll try that and see if, if Lori brings out something for me. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, and I'll tell you what, I've got the most amazing wife in the world, but she's not here in Orlando. This is, you know, so uh, I, I'm, I'm sure she would happily do it. Uh, uh, maybe not. I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, mm, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I've wonderful coworkers too. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Lori would do it if I, but the poor woman's got about 10 different things. When I come out here and she's got the children, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to throw one more thing on her lap tonight. Well, I'm also afraid to go on record to say what I think my wife might actually do. Yeah, so. exactly. So that's why we're going to, we need to go on to a different topic before we she both get in trouble. Show, so. <laughs> I, I doubt it's possible just to, just to see what I'm up to. Three. Number three, SPL, hmm. uh, which is uh, stands for sound pressure level, uh, which uh, we you know you mentioned dB earlier. That's decibels, which is the unit of measure for sound pressure level, uh, our our perceived level of sound. And uh, I think that's important. We've talked about does it reproduce the frequencies we want? Does it uh, point them in the direction we want? Uh, you know, cover the area, you know, horizontally, vertically, whatever, there's different coverage patterns available. Does it, uh, accomplish those? Uh, but is it loud enough? Yeah. Number, number three has to be, you know, and again, top of that heap is, do I have enough rig for the gig? Now, where are, is the, the SPL, where is that typically measured? Because if I'm out, uh, you know, is it something where they're measuring it in the middle of my da dance floor area or where are they measuring that number? Well, when you talk about the client, that's uh, that gets into more of that subjectivity. And I see another uh, logarithmic calculation coming your, your way here. Uh, <laughs> any chance to drop it is a good day. I, yeah, so, I'm, I'm kind of picking that up here, you know. Typically, loudspeakers are measured using one watt of power. And some viewers are thinking, one watt? That's yes. Uh, Believe me, when we circle back to power handling, uh, that's going to make a lot more sense to you. Uh, maybe not. It might. It might be one of those things that sends you uh, sends you to question the cosmos and your existence. But one of those things, once you once you uh, you know sort of metabolize it and you get it and it clicks, you say, "Wow, I guess it really does make sense." Physics, well, physics is pretty solid. You know, uh, we know about these things like gravitational constants and whatever. And this is another one of those things that we know about, and it's just proven time and time again to be accurate. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So typically a loudspeaker is measured using one watt of power at a distance of one meter, 3.28 feet from the loudspeaker. Uh, and then we know uh, by this math that we talked about earlier, how loud it will get at max power, et cetera, et cetera. And oh no, we froze up. Oh, uh oh. Yep, we're back. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. So, yeah, 
Now we're frozen again. Well, I don't know what's going on. Are we back? Yeah, we. I, I hear you now. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, viewers. Yeah. Uh, I broke the internet. Yeah, at least for a second. So, take that, Kardashians. Yeah. See what they can't do that you can do. Uh, I broke the internet. All I had to do is use a physics formula. Yeah, exactly. You start bringing out the the slide rule, and everyone gets this little kind of. Didn't have to X-ray my butt. I just had to uh, use a physics formula. There's a image we really didn't need tonight. Well, isn't that what one of the Kardashians did? Didn't they, didn't they do an X-ray of her butt or something? Yeah, but you know now now you got us thinking about you going up an escalator and and, and X-raying your butt. I think you might be the only one thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Let's just hope that's the case. <laughs> you might be the only one thinking about it. All right. So where do we leave off? So, so SPL is typically measured at one meter, uh, and and uh, we have this peak output every time we double the distance from the loudspeaker we're going to lose six decibels that's that's a known entity on a point source loudspeaker uh and and, and so if you say i need to accomplish you know 85 db a weighted on the dance floor then you can extrapolate what you need to have back at your loudspeaker uh, those are just known things you know mm-hmm uh, and in order to keep us on time, you know, I, I, I think that's something we could spend a lot more time on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there are distance calculators that you can punch in the distance. You can put in the starting loudness and the distance and it will calculate it for you. I can also give you the formula. Uh, it's it's uh, basically because it's 6 dB instead of 3, like power rise, it's 20 log uh, of the distance. And uh, then you subtract that from your, but again, there's calculators. There's it sounds like something we should do an actual demonstration on where we set up a speaker and actually go and do the test with the A weighting at these different distances and really display and demonstrate that. You know, it's fascinating because again, we find out time and time again, as much as we wish, wish physics wasn't true, sometimes it is. And we, we say, well, I don't understand how this can possibly be. Well, it doesn't matter if you understand it. It just is. It just is, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's on you to understand it. You're not going to bend physics to your will. You know? exactly. You're just going to sooner or later accept that. You're not a force user. You can't bend around it. Okay, so let's jump on. Let's continue on. We'll, we'll get back to the speaker one. I think that's a great, uh, a great uh, demonstration we should do. Add that to our list. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and, and I'll tell you, I'm, I don't, we're talking now 2018, bringing the audio symposium back. And mm -hmm. I think one of those type of things, too, that obviously we do some awesome things on this show. And I'm, I'm super excited to do that show with you, John. But if you really want to take your audio knowledge uh, up, you know, a notch or 10, uh, that's a great place to do it. For so sure. just put that in the back of your mind that we, we are going to bring it back in 2018. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just too busy in 2017. I'm sorry, uh, but we're bringing the lighting symposium and the audio symposium back for 2018. So, uh, so number four on my list is size and weight. You know, it, it has to get there. Yeah. It has to fit there. Uh, now, this is where physics, again, is somewhat unfriendly. It's made, we've made tremendous strides with improvements in the manufacturing of loudspeakers, but you just sometimes you just need bigger and heavier to accomplish something uh but that's why you weigh all these trade-offs and you say well i i, I can't carry that speaker i yeah. can't put it in my vehicle therefore i need to consider that uh this is what i need to accomplish this is the frequency i need to reproduce this is how loud i need it to be and this is what i can manage for weight and you can sort of take all these things and begin to sort of weigh the pros and cons um you know, it allows you to understand the sacrifices you're making. Engineering is always a series of compromises. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, well, I'm, I need to make it fit. Uh, I need to make it under this weight. Uh, you know, so what am I giving up to accomplish that? You know, is it in the frequency response? Is it not as deep? Is it not as rigid a box? Uh, was, you know, I was, I was uh, teasing a DJ friend of mine the other day because he was talking about a, a speaker being, uh, 80 pounds being way too heavy. Uh, and, and he's right. I mean, for his application and trying to put an 80 pound speaker up on a tripod pool would be very difficult. Yeah. Uh, but he says, well, 80 pounds, that's just crazy. I said, well, my line array boxes are hundred pounds a piece and I hang 12 of them at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's different, of course, because I'm using a motor to pull them up. But, you know, again, you're just not going to get concert performance out of uh, an 80 pound loudspeaker. Yeah. It's just two different things. Man, if it could be done, it would be done. Uh, 
semis consume fuel and and the more trucks needs more drivers and believe me tour stuff's gotten smaller and lighter too we're just not crossing into that you know you just can't bring a you know, little clock, clock radio size speaker and rock a venue yeah you know uh, physics wins in the end uh, always so but size and weight of course is important you got to be able to lift it got to be able to carry it got to be able to fit it into your mode of transport so that that one is an important consideration mm-hmm. um then uh number five i went with driver specs and this is a little bit murkier maybe yeah uh, but looking at specs, yeah it can be a little bit more gray uh looking at the individual specs of the drivers inside the box can give us a little bit better indicator uh as to what this thing is capable of uh you know larger high frequency diaphragms uh and larger uh throat sizes on high frequency horns uh, are going to give us, uh, you know, a bit smoother response, uh, you know, maybe a bit louder. Uh, you know, if, if we look at a, a voice coil and a woofer that's uh, four inches and we look at another woofer that's two inches, we could probably bet the four inch voice coil is going to prevail. You know, yeah. it's a bigger voice coil and, and thus, you know, bigger magnet area, more surface area and all sorts of things. Uh, you know, probably better cooling, you know, lots of stuff that go into that. Um, you know, we can, we can just sort of look at those overall construction specifications and get a feeling for what we're getting here. Now, that is one area that I see things, you know, where you kind of get sold a little bill of goods, you know, um, which I guess we're getting, we're getting to, that's number eight on my list we'll get to. But, uh, but that is one indicator. Uh, questions on that? Are we okay to move on? We're good. We're good. Yep. They're, they're just, uh, the chat room is, was, uh, they're talking about some other stuff right now. So they're talking about Kardashian's X-ray. No, well, they, well, they're talking about, they're talking about door because they've been talking about subwoofers and then they, they, uh, got into the width of doors and then they were talking about the width of an X-ray well, room door. Important consideration. Listen, I mean, that's a really good point. Good job viewers. I mean, that's, uh, you know, if it's got to fit through a, a standard 3.0 door in a venue, uh, that's a really important consideration. Yeah, 3.0 door is a three-foot wide door, which is 36 inch, as uh, as as Day and I mentioned. There you go. So you're, you're, you're using construction language there, which a lot of folks are like, well, "What's a 3.0 door?" I am a licensed contractor, as you recall. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's why I interpret. Sometimes I have to interpret. Sometimes I have to ask questions to get you to to, you know, to sell, say the things. I appreciate you, John. Yeah, the viewers that's... appreciate you. Uh, okay, we're, we need to keep uh, going, and we don't want to. We don't want to run out of time here on our list. Oh no, 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 I think we'll be all right. Okay, uh, good, good, good. I'm just checking my my phone's blowing up here, so I'm checking the time and five messages. Uh, so number six. Uh, I call I, I I call it I call it the finish, the surface. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, you know what is the surface of the loudspeaker? Is it carpeted? Uh, is it uh, like a, a a truck liner? You know, kind of you know a coated yeah. surface. You know, uh, how durable is that surface? Uh, you, you know, things like that. It's a pretty short and sweet one, but that's a that's doesn't make the top half of my list, but it's on my list to say well. How long is this thing going to hold up and is it easy to clean? And, you know, uh, we, we affectionately refer to the carpet as rat fur, you know, <laughs> is it made of rat fur or is it got a, a smooth finish? And, uh, and when it comes to the finish, I mean, there's cleaning, maintaining, repairing. I mean, is there a way to, to be able to, you know, let's the rat fur. I mean, I've had it where I've, I've hit to hit a speaker and kind of gouged into that and cut the, uh, cut the material. Very tough to fix, you know, without redoing the whole thing, pretty much. I'm... And of course, back in the day when you and I were gigging uh, in small clubs and things, uh, you know, the, the, the smoking was still allowed in bars. Uh, yeah. and it never, you'd never get it out of that that uh, cloth stuff. Um, it stinks to this day. Yeah. Uh, number seven. Now we're getting into where it's not so much in order of priority. You kind of got the top half and the bottom half. Number seven price uh some people say money's not an issue i don't know those people uh you know i've worked for some really big acts and some really big venues uh you know national championship games we do military contracting price is always an issue you know it's always an issue on some level Uh, i've yet to have anybody just say you know what spend whatever you want Mm -hmm. Uh, 
so now again, budget is an individual thing. Uh, budgets vary by the individual, but of course you have to be able to afford it. Now here's a thought on the contrary of, uh, of that. Again, engineering is a series of compromises. I put price below all those other things because if it doesn't do the job, it doesn't matter what it costs. Right. You know, at that point, if you're saying, well, this is what I can afford, I'm willing to overlook all the things it needs to do because it's what I can afford, then at least you know, well, I'm getting what I can afford, even if it doesn't do anything I need it to do. Uh, but I've got a thought about buying though, and I just picked some average numbers because I, I want people, I want viewers to think like business people. And I want, I want you to be successful and I want you to make money. Uh, I, I mean that sincerely. I want you to run your business like a business so that you can be more profitable at it. Uh, so I wrote this down and I thought, okay, let's just pick some numbers out of a hat. Okay. They're, they are fairly arbitrary. Uh, let's say you spend $1,500 on a pair of loudspeakers. Okay. And, and let's say that you have a gig every other week for an average of 26 gigs a year. Okay, so you use these loudspeakers 26 gigs a year. And let's say that you use the IRS standard depreciation schedule of five years for a capital purchase. Uh, and so you're going to amortize these speakers over five years. Okay, basically what I'm saying is you say, I'm going to use these speakers for five years. And at the end of five years, I'm going to declare them worth zero. Now, of course, if you use them longer than five years, that's a bonus. Right. But in this example, 26 gigs a year for five years, and then you throw them away. You know, not that you would, but you could at that point. They have yep. paid themselves off. Yeah, basically they've been fully depreciated at that point in time. Right. Anything you get after that is free money. Uh, anything you sell them for, anything you, uh, you know, any additional shows you use them for, if you planned on depreciating them to zero in five years. Okay. And of so course, we have to make the statement that uh, we know you wouldn't sell them after you've depreciated them to zero without reporting that income to the IRS because, you know, that's just the right thing to do. Well, absolutely. Yeah. That's, you know, I'm not a tax attorney, but yes, uh, it's not free money. I shouldn't say it's not free money from a income standpoint. It's free money from a depreciation standpoint. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, thank but you, yeah. John. And, uh, yeah. This Japanese lawyers also thank you. Uh, so, so here it is. If you take a $1,500 pair of loudspeakers, use them for 26 gigs a year over the course of five years, that $1,500 pair of loudspeakers cost you $11.53 a show. Now, I cannot think of anything more important to a DJ show than loudspeakers. Yep. Certainly microphone and controller and music or all those things are, all, are equally important, but loudspeakers have to be considered one of the core elemental pieces of the gear of a DJ show. For sure. I mean, for example, what happens if you don't have speakers? <laughs> Game over. You're you know, just an annoying well, guy with a lot of lights. Yeah, <laughs> nobody, nobody dances to the light show. Yeah, uh, unless you're unless you're using a house system, in which case, never mind. So, listen, I hope you're charging enough to pay eleven dollars and fifty three cents a piece for a pair of speakers. I, I mean, truly, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being facetious at all. I'm saying, listen. When you break it down like that and you say, okay, what can I afford? I would like to think you could afford even 20 or $30 a show for the loudspeakers. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about, you know, $3,000 for a pair of loudspeakers, which is more than, than the majority of DJs would spend. Right. The point is a quality loudspeaker actually is really affordable. You know, I'm not saying that to get you to buy more, but I'm saying when you think about it in those terms, when you think about what you're asking of that loudspeaker to do and the importance it carries in your show, uh, you should kind of rethink the whole price thing, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a, good, that's a great point because a good speaker will last the five to six years. And, you know, you and I have both owned speakers that we bought when we, you know, couldn't afford anything. And oh, yeah, my it, first speaker was terrible. Yeah, and <laughs> I, they, they last I for, get it very, very short period of time. It's like, oh, that didn't work. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally get it. Uh, I, I've totally walked that walk. And I know, you know, I'm not, I don't have endless pockets even now. Uh, but I think what I'm trying to do is uh, pass along some of the hard, hard learned lessons. You know, uh, I just did the quick math here. If you have a $500 pair of loudspeakers, uh, 
that's the same as getting one Starbucks a gig. <laughs> you should probably put more emphasis on your speakers than you do your coffee. Just saying. Because the coffee fact, is here today, gone tomorrow. You don't own it. You just rent it. You just rent it and it's just passing on through, baby. Passing on through. I bet you at the hotel, this soda costs $4, which is more than that. You know? So anyway, price is important, of course. Uh, it has to fit your budget. But when you're establishing what your budget is, don't make it, don't just pick a number out of the hat. Give some thought as to the business of your business. Mm -hmm. Okay. A good quality loudspeaker is going to sound better. It's going to make my reputation better. It's going to be more reliable and last longer. What can I realistically afford to invest uh, in a good pair of loudspeakers that will make me money? Now, that doesn't mean that you should only give your loudspeaker 1153 a show because you want to make some profit. Yeah. yeah. But again, if you're not charging enough, you know what? That's somebody else's show, the charging part. But <laughs> just think about it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes left. We are up to well, seven. Oh, we're on eight now. Oh, we're on eight. Yeah, where have you been? I'm back on six, obviously. <laughs> Number eight, uh, brand. You know, I wrestled with this one, but I left it in because I think it is a known, there are, you know, the known brands. We know EV is going to produce, by and large, good loudspeakers, uh, you know, really good loudspeakers. We know... QSE and JF and FPT are all going to produce good loudspeakers. You know, we can, that doesn't mean that they don't make a lemon. doesn't mean that once in a while they don't produce something you scratch your head about. Right. But their specs are also going to be really meaningful too. And that's where the rubber hits the road. You can look at EV specs for their ZLX, which is the entry level, versus the ETX. And you can see there's a difference. There's meaningful difference. And it's all qualified and documented. So I think, you know, when... When considering loudspeakers, I just think it's important to consider the source. You know, is this company's primary business making loudspeakers? Uh, do they have engineering resources to produce meaningful specifications? Uh, you know, that's a, so I think it does matter a little bit. You know, sometimes you stray too far from home and you're sad you did, you know? So number nine, uh, mounting and rigging. Uh, for example, how do I mount this loudspeaker on a pole, or do I need high points? Yep. Not all loudspeakers are designed to be overhead. They don't necessarily have the internal bracing and other, you know, I see people do really dumb things like just turn eye screws into the side of a woods. Listen, that box was never meant to be hung that way. That's a terrible idea. You're gonna kill somebody someday and I don't wanna be around for it. Yeah. Uh, if you wanna hang a loudspeaker, get a loudspeaker that was designed to rig. Many, many, many portable and very affordable loudspeakers have built-in rigging points that are rated. Uh, and here again, C number eight, brand and reputation, right? Yeah. But if you wanna fly a loudspeaker, get a loudspeaker with rigging points. Uh, look at the pole mounting options. Uh, so I think that it, you know, it handles, you know, how easy is it to, to carry and get up on a stand? Those things are uh, considerations also. For sure. Which brings us to number 10. Uh, and an early finish. Uh, power handling or wattage? Now, here's why they make my list at all. Uh, if I have a passive loudspeaker that I need to power with an amplifier, well, then I need to know what the power handling is. And I need to pay close attention to that because yeah. I have this initial sensitivity measurement and I know that every time I double the power from one watt, two watt, four watt, eight watt, I'm going to gain an additional three dB. I know that adding a thousand watts from one watt gains me 30 dB and 10,000 watts gains me 40 dB. Uh, and so that initial sensitivity is important when paired with the power handling to determine how loud the loudspeaker was going to be. And then I can match the amplifier to it. Now, in the case of a powered loudspeaker where the amplifier is built into the loudspeaker, here's about the only reason that wattage matters to me at all. I got to plug the thing in. How much power do I need from the wall? Watts come from the wall. We don't listen to watts. We don't dance to watts and our clients aren't buying watts. So in this case, uh, it becomes a very last consideration after all the other things. In fact, if two loudspeakers 
produce equal volume and all other things are equal frequency response and all those sorts of things and one has a lower wattage i would consider it a better loudspeaker because it's more efficient it's sort of like judging a car based on miles per gallon mm -hmm. <laughs> you know uh, now again you have to put all the things into the hopper and consider it all but that's why wattage, while it's the first thing people talk about, is the last thing on my list. Somebody says, oh, I got a 2,000 watt loudspeaker. Okay, good for you. Yeah. Or somebody says, I got a 10,000 watt loudspeaker. You know, <laughs> at that point, I'd say, well, listen, I got a concert touring line array box that I will take your 10,000 watt loudspeaker and obliterate that thing. And guess what? It ain't 10,000 watts. Uh, you know, not one box. Uh, in fact, if you were to ask me right now, how many watts is one of my X2-212-90 line, uh, line array modules? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I don't know. D it doesn't matter. <laughs> what you do know, though, is that it can fill the room with the SPL at the level you need it. it the clarity is there. The, the sound quality. What, I mean, those are the important things. And then, I know that I can do a full arena with ZZ Top and rock the crap off of people's faces. You know, just... It sort of came out wrong, but you know what I mean? Uh, it's that next ray but so, I mean, that's where we're at. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the point being, you know, power is important because, you know, I have distros and all that sorts of things, but I, you know, I have the amplifier system uh, as recommended by the manufacturer and the processing, uh, you know, the presets and all that sort of thing. So I never really gave much thought as to what the individual power handling of the box is. That yeah. was irrelevant, you know? Uh, it's coming off of four-aught feeders uh, from the distro panel. I got you know, enough power coming in to run a small, you know, small city. Uh, but the individual power handling of the box was irrelevant in terms of how much loudness I'm going to produce. Yeah. Uh, you know, anyway, so, so there we, there we go. I'm sure hopefully that, hopefully I'd elicited some questions. Hopefully some viewers uh, kind of said, wait, run that by me again. No, they've been, they've been going and talking, uh, talking about some of the different, uh, I really wish I could read these comments. This sounds more interesting than what I'm. Yeah, talking. no, though they, they uh, were talking about you know, when you were talking price and such, and they were bouncing some things back and forth there. And they're talking power supply. Somebody brought up a power supply uh, capacitor, in. Uh, well, sure, in, good point. In the uh, yeah. amplifiers. Yeah, once we get into amplifiers, we're sort of straying from loudspeakers. But of course, in the world of powered loudspeakers, the amplifier is in it. Uh, you know. Uh, I saw something very interesting on the new Personas loudspeakers. Uh, they use a Class D uh, amplifier on the low frequency, and uh, inexpensive Class D amplifiers are known to have uh, artifacts in the high frequency, and most loudspeaker manufacturers just kind of shrug that off in their cheap loudspeakers. Um, better and more expensive Class D amplifiers deal with that with filters, what personas did uh, was very interesting to keep the price down they didn't put a class d amplifier on the high frequency they put a class a b on the high frequency and you know it thus it sounds better than mm -hmm. some of the other two uh, you, you don't have those high frequency artifacts uh, you got a class d on the bottom end and a class uh, a b on the top end now if you buy like an ev etx hey they've dealt with that man those there's filters are in there those things sound fantastic ekx they sound amazing but we're getting to a little higher price class. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, all those things come into play. Power supply, how fast can it recharge the power rails of the amplifier? Uh, you know, good things. Hard to pin it down to just 10, but I think this is the, the kind of, if I say, you know, it's just the general top 10 list for picking a loudspeaker, that would be it. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. For those of you who are watching, uh, down in the description below, we have a, a link there to the NLFX Pro website where you can go and check that out. And I've got their full list of their active speakers that they have on the website, so you can go look at that. And if you ever have questions about speakers, well, you could call and talk to Ben, but he's usually busy. Call and call, oh, call Katie. No, well, better to send a message. Uh, yeah, you know. exactly. Yep, send a message. But yeah, if you're looking no, for, a, for you. listen, I, I'm sorry, John, I want to interrupt yeah. you to make a point. I'm never too busy for, for our, our customers. Uh, so, uh, you know, sometimes I might have to say, I'll get back to you. I got a whole list of people I'm going to get back to right after this. Uh, but uh, don't ever think I'm too busy. Please always reach out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, and in the direction I was, I was going, not so much that Ben was too busy that, but Katie's Katie uh, from NLFX Pro, great young lady to talk to, and she will get you hooked up if you're looking for some speakers or anything else. She's a, a, a very knowledgeable young lady who has been around the industry for quite a long time. So, 
Yeah, well said. She's dynamite. Uh, if you go into Mobile Beat, you're going to meet her there. Uh, like you said, she works in the industry too. Uh, she walks the walk. Uh, she's just as passionate about this stuff as you guys. Uh, and uh, she's uh, she, she really is dynamite. So. Yeah. And then once, you, once you've gotten a great deal from Katie, then you can have Ben give you some tech support and he can explain jewels and wattage. Well, we are, uh, we are a team. I don't know how many people I get into conversations about jewels with, but, uh, you know, uh, I guess, you know, we could get into how you measure amperes and coulombs, and, you know, all those sorts of things, but yeah. uh, no, you know, listen, we're a team, you know, it's not an either, or it's not a Katie or Ben, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and we're just two of the, uh, you know, uh, nearly 30 people at NLFX, uh, all very much a team and all very excited to, uh, to work for you and, and, and try to, make your business more successful and more profitable. Uh, sounds good. Sounds good. Ben, thank you very much. We're going to wrap things up and we'll be back in about 15 minutes. We've got uh, Brian Red, myself, and we've got Howie joining us tonight. And we're going to be talking. Uh, right. Yeah, we've got a couple of different things, but Howie's got an idea for, for the mic drop. And this is probably the best solution I've seen so far. So mm. Howie's going to share that with us in tonight's show. It should be pretty good. We're looking forward to it. So thanks, Ben. And thank you guys for watching. Watch that. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So we'll be back in about 15 minutes tonight, gang. Thanks. Thanks.